If you want to know the value of 1909 to 1958 wheat cents and what dates and mint marks to look for, as well as the varieties and errors, then stay tuned because I'm going to show you. This is Daniel and you are watching Coin Help You YouTube channel. Please like, share, and comment. And above all, please share. Let's get these videos out so people know exactly what to look for when it comes to Lincoln Cents from 1909 to 1958. You know, a lot of customers come into the shop and call the phone and they ask us, how much are Lincoln Week Cents worth? How much is a 1958 worth? How much is a 1930 worth? And a lot of them have looked on uh, websites like Etsy or maybe eBay, or some of them have just looked and seen what someone's trying to sell one for and they're a bit misled on values or exactly what coin to look for or what an error looks like or what a variety is. So we're gonna go over that and we're gonna go through some details. Like I said, these videos are not meant to be exhaustive. I'm not going to cover every single thing, but I will go over the most valuable ones you need to look for, uh, the ones that you wanna put your time in. The short answer to how much Lincoln wheat cents are worth is basically a few cents a piece. Most are 40s, 50s, and 30s, and the common dates and mints, and they were hoarded. When the U.S. Mint decided to go to the 1959 in the memorial cent, everybody wanted to hoard the wheat cents, thinking that they're going to increase in value because they weren't going to be made anymore. Then people were putting them back for their copper, but you're not allowed to melt them. So they didn't uh, deteriorate in circulation or become lost because over the years, a coin, about 25 uh, years is average for a coin. So coins typically disappear from circulation. And that's one of the reasons why they continued to mint the Lincoln cent. With that being said, there are things like RPMs, double dies, and different mint errors that you can look for in the Lincoln cents that are worth a little bit of money. But one of the things you don't want to tie yourself up with is looking for little tiny die chips, little die cracks, little tiny striking anomalies, die wear and things like that, uh, missing design elements. Let's say like a missing uh, letter or a missing date digit. Those kind of things are pretty common. And what it is, is that whenever the Mint employee went back in to refinish the die face after it uh, clashed with another die, they would accidentally remove uh, part of the coin or let's say part of the design. And with that, Sometimes the grease got impacted into the die cavity and it would strike through on the coin and it wouldn't strike a part of the coin. Those are pretty common. The only time would be if you're missing the FG on like a 69, uh, which is not even a wheat cent, but you know, if you're missing something, some, if it's already established as a variety, then you might look for those. But what you want to look for are established varieties. If you're looking for discovery coins or you think you have one, that's beyond the scope of this video. And it's also something that I don't deal with. I don't mess with um, raw discovery coins being sent to me or pictures and things because I don't have that kind of ability to tribute a discovery coin. Um, I would direct you to someone at Konica. Uh, that way you can send an email and send it to the proper person and you know, they will obviously charge you a fee plus some shipping. But if you think you have a discovery coin, that's the best way to go about doing that. What you wanna look for first, and that's key dates. Key dates are low mintage, low production numbers. In other words, they didn't make very many to begin with, so they're better dates and mints, uh, the ones that are harder to find. So we're gonna go through that list, and I'm gonna show you here up on the screen which ones to initially look for that you, can, that you might be able to find that don't have to have a variety. Some of these do have varieties for them. I'm not going to list them because they're going to be worth something regardless. So you want to put these back. These are keepers. You have the 1909 VDB, the 1909 S, and the 1909 S with the VDB on the reverse. The, the VDB is on the reverse at the bottom next to the rim. 1910 S, 1911 D, and 11S, the 1912 S and D, the 1913 S and D, the 1914 D, the 1915 S, the 1922 D, the 1922 No D. Then you have the 1922 with a weak D, and those need to have uh, preferably a strong reverse. A 1923 S a 1924D, a 1926S, 
and a 1931S. Those are your better date and mints and key dates. You find one of them, those are keepers, and you put them back. After that, then you're going to have to look for varieties or mint errors. I'm going to show you some pictures here. If you're looking for, uh, let's say, a, a die clash, they're not worth a lot of money, but you know they do add a little bit of value if they're uncirculated. Um, counter clashes is another one to look for. Uh, you want to look for rim to rim die breaks, and they call those cuds, and they have to be on the rim. And you have a retained, and you have a part that's broke off, which shows as a hump on the coin here, as you can see in the picture. Now they need to be dramatic. The larger the clash, or the more obvious the clash, or as the larger the cud, misaligned die off center, um, the more you see that, the more obvious it is, you can see how much more that's going to be worth. Now, a slight misaligned die, which you see it looks like a double rim, is not going to add value to your coin. Also, uh, slight clips and things like that. Uh, you got to watch out for damage coins because you're looking for the Blakesley's effect where the other side, the opposing side of the coin would be a little weakness in that area showing where the coin was missing and the die struck it, it created a little weakness on the opposite side. That's one thing to look for with a genuine clip. Otherwise, people can just clip the side of a coin and you would think that it's an actual clip and it's not. So that's the few things that you have to look for. And uh, the rest would be double dice and we're going to go through and look at that and some RPMs and some over mint marks. Okay, that's part one. I split the video up because it's gonna be a really long video. This covers the basics as far as key dates and what mint errors to look for. Part two is gonna go over the double dies, the RPMs, the over mint marks, as well as the inverted mint marks. Any variety that, you know, pretty common and well known, we're gonna go over that in a second video. Now. This one, remember, you're not looking for a missing date digit. You're not looking for a missing design element. You're not looking for things like, uh, unless it's a, the designer initials in the memorial sense, there's some of those. But you're not looking for little tiny die chips. You're not looking for little tiny die cracks. If you want something that's going to be worth a little bit of money and to narrow it down to, to just coins that are going to be worth something circulated, then you want to follow the advice in this video. You can look for whatever you want. If that's fun to you, that's fine. I'm not saying you don't do that. I'm just telling you that if you want something that is circulated, that's worth a little bit of money, and you want to narrow your time down because it takes a lot of time to do this, then you want to take the advice in this video. So you know what key dates to look for. You know the dramatic errors that you want to look for. You can get on Heritage and look those up. If you need to know values for all this, um, you can obviously take a look at sold auctions on Heritage, sold auctions on eBay, Stacks and Bowers, and Legends, or you can go to PCGS or NGC and you can take a look at that or you get your red book and it give you an idea of the values. But just remember, those are all retail values, but they'll give you an idea of what these coins are selling for and what they potentially could be worth. So get ready for part two. It'll be coming out as soon as I, I can. And thanks for watching this video and please like, share, and comment and have a great day.